What's up, everybody, and welcome in to another edition of the sit down. As always, enjoy this video. Please make sure you hit the like button and let me know what you think in the comment section or the chat box to the right of the show. If you're new around here, you just haven't done it yet, you're living under a rock and seeing this video for the first time, I don't know what you're waiting for. Hit that subscribe button below now so you never miss another sit down video. If you're watching this video, we are live. And if you're here live in the chat, Make sure you say hello in the live chat box to the right of the show. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to delve in live to another crime history topic. And it's not necessarily crime history, but it's phonies pretending to be a part of crime history, which has me very irritated lately here on YouTube. I want to talk very openly about the state of the mafia content genre. Like any other niche topic, a community has been created here on YouTube. We've seen the different folks that have popped up and what they've been able to do is create their own channels, communities, and places for people to have a good time on a nightly or daily basis. Now, some of the channels are complete pitfalls, full of rejects, miscreants, and misfits. Some folks have created a way for themselves to either make money, create friendships, uh, and also several have been able to grow exponentially and create opportunities for themselves and for people close to them. Now, one thing most of the people in here have in common is they have an interest in crime history, mafia history, true crime um, and most of them have a common goal in the end. They want to educate people. They want to entertain people. They want to make a little money as well. Um, but as always, with everything, there comes phony, fugazi frauds that pop up. And one thing that I've been a bit annoyed with is not only the people that have come on here and pretended to tell tall tales and think no one's going to look into it, but the people, the clowns that support and give these people platforms we are creating history, folks, whether you want to agree with it or not. And whether you think you're doing a service to people, you are not. Putting people on the internet that are telling you a phony story and, you know, in the end are only trying to make money off you, i.e. selling and hawking fucking books and TV shows and nonsense. Shame on some of you people that give these people platforms. You phony creators or creators that put out fake stories on people just to get clicks and views. I have a passion for this. I truly enjoy it. And when I talk about it, I think you can see that I exhume just passion for this stuff. I'm trying to tell a story about people that largely have not been talked about. I know we've heard about John Gotti and Al Capone and Vince Giganti. But my channel was created to tell the stories of the other people as well other criminals, other gangsters, other mobsters, other drug dealers. And there's so many good content creators out there, people that truly have a passion and want to tell a story. There's one thing we can't do, though, is that rewriting history. And I know there's a fine line between informants on here. What do you believe? What don't you believe? I've always told everybody. I've mentioned this multiple times. And this has got me into trouble with certain uh, creators that are informants. I have always told people, Take what these people say with a grain of salt. For instance, I had Sammy Gravano on this channel. He told me that he at one point was instructed to kill Joey Gallo. Do I believe that? No, I don't. I don't believe that. I'll tell you that right now. Do I believe most of what Gravano says? I do. Because a lot of it is historically backed up and is accurate. But you have to take everything these folks say with a grain of salt. You have to do your own research. You have to look into what they do. The one thing about Gravano or Calandra or A-Light or Fiordalino or Howie Santos or, uh, you know, Michael Franzese or Hootie or, or any of these people. OK, the one thing I will say about all of them is they had a connection to the mafia, whether they were an associate or they were a soldier or they were an underboss or they were a captain. They all were connected to the mafia. OK. They just were. There's historical relevance to back it up. There's jail records to back it up. But what I'm going to talk about today 
are the phony frauds that have no connection to the mafia, no connection more than you or I that have pervaded this industry and tried to steal and hawk stuff from you and from me and from everybody else. And shame on, as well, the creators that give these people platforms. It is your job to vet every person you have coming on. And you're lucky you're not in a genre that will actually call you the fuck out for it like I'm doing. Go to the prison genre and bring people on that didn't actually go to prison. You will be hawked up and spit out real quick. And you won't have a channel anymore. Because marks, they get dealt with in that genre. And you will get called out if you do it. So to you people that are doing this, take this as a relevant thing. If you want to be taken seriously, you want to get more subs, you want to get more views, put people on and let people tell stories that you can actually uh, back up. So we're going to talk about that today. And I welcome you all in. Um, we're about at 170 people in here, about five minutes in. Thank you for joining me. I appreciate it. If you enjoy this content, you enjoy my channel, please do me a favor. If you're new, subscribe, hit that like button, share the show. If you want more relevant, really good crime content, check out my podcast, The Sit Down, A Crime Mystery Podcast. You can get that wherever you get your podcast. I got to tell you guys, I was super happy. So last week, um, we have the iTunes charts, right? I was a, like top 100 in true crime. Out of all true crime, I was hot up 100. Pretty pr pretty proud of that. That is not easy to do. There are a lot of true crime podcasts out there. I also, I will say, I'm going to drop a link. Um, I want to drop a link in the chat to my uh, podcast this week. Um, I just posted it. Um, I did an episode with Frank Fiordolino. We talked about Salvatore Vitale. In my estimation, I believe Sal Vitale is probably the, one of the more destructive informants uh, the mob has ever seen. Uh, we talked about his life. We talked about uh, Frank's uh, connection and knowing both those guys. And, and I thought a really good episode. So make sure you check that out. Let me say hello to some people. Oh, there he is. Fat Paul saying, I'm going to talk about you today. Uh, you did a very good job with one of these individuals that I'm going to talk about. Um, and, and I'll talk about that in just a second. Cameron Taylor. Welcome in. How are you? Uh, yo from Pittsburgh. What's up? What up, T. Kizzle? Welcome in, my man. Rob Z, what's good? What up, Ridge? Charles Holland, how you doing? How you doing? William Brooklyn, what's up? Will Mossy, first time catching a live. Welcome. How are you? Uh, by any chance, did you watch the documentary about 50 Cent with the Flores twins? It's very good. It's on audio. If you create a new account, you can get one set of for free, and it's very worth it. Well, I have no problem paying. I will check that out. I haven't watched it yet. I do know all about the Flores twins and the Sinaloa cartel. Uh, I will check that out. Absolutely. Phil Anastasi Jr. Phil, how did I do with the Joe Legambi video? Guys, do me a favor. Go check out some of my latest videos. I actually, and I know guys, I've gotten a little bit away from mob content. I'm doing more with, you know, Bernie Madoff and and the Idaho murders and, and, and um, you know, other things. A.R. Ab, we did a video on. I'm trying to grow and get into other things. I know I'm not going to get as many views as I was getting when I do gangster stuff, but I got to tell you, one of my favorite videos I did was that Joe Legambi video. I really, I got to admit, I'm going to get a lot more involved with Philly. Okay, that's always been the thing that I've been most um, educated on. Um, I love New York, but I feel like we've done enough New York videos. I'm going to do more deep dives into Philadelphia characters. And I will admit, Saturday's video, uh, we're, weirdly enough, going to do New York. But we are going to delve into the life of John A. Light. We're going to tell the real story of John Aylett on Saturday. We're going to talk about the myths. We're going to talk about the things that he didn't do. We're going to start from the beginning. We're going to understand who John Aylett really is. I have asked John Aylett to come on my show. He has not responded. He had an opportunity, but I've done this before. I've talked about Gene. I've talked about some of these guys doing a deep dive into who they really are, because that's most important. When you hear someone talking about their life, it's them telling you their life. It's not another source telling you about their life. So we're going to do that. We're going to talk about who he really is and what he actually did do. Uh, what up, Joey Frakes? How are you? Uh, thank you, man. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. I think it's important. You have to do that, brother. Uh, this Anthony Ramundi fool has 3 million views on his Vlad interview. Yeah, and we're going to get to that. Uh, Vinny Boombots, what's up, my friend? I want to shout out Vinny Boombots. Um, Vinny Boombots sent me $200 uh, for the new year. Just a great guy. Um, 
I really appreciate people like Vinny because I'll tell you guys the truth. Um, I when I do the like the Sammy interview, okay. I went up to New York to interview Sammy. Okay, that costs money. Okay, Barstool doesn't pay for everything that I do. Okay, I, I'm very happy that I work there, but there are certain things that I got to pay for. When I get a new piece of equipment, I got to pay for it. Um, you know, I have producers. You know, I'm trying to get them more involved. I'm paying someone to do TikTok content for me now. So, if you have the ability to donate to a content creator, please do that. Okay. All this stuff that we're doing, okay, whether it's entertaining, whether it's history, whether it's whatever, content creators deserve to be heard as real employed. They're, they're real people in the workforce. I do something that's entertaining people, right? This is what I do. My job is I don't have another job, okay? I work for a company. I do this. I do that. Any way I can make money on the side, I'm looking to do that. And I put out a lot of good content, and I think I um, deserve it. So if you'd like to... Please do me a favor, send in a super chat, uh, send a cash app. I'll put that in here. And again, I would make it very clear to you. If you enjoy someone's content, please donate to them um, because they deserve it and they work hard. Uh, they're taking time out of their day to provide entertainment to you. Um, Ali, Alfie Matthews, what's up? How are you, bro? Um, Jeff, would you consider Jimmy Calandra a fraud? I saw your post when he was caught in the Tommy Karate lies. That's why I asked. Uh, no, no. Uh, I don't consider Jimmy Calandra a fraud. Not at all. Jimmy Calandra is very connected to the uh, Bonanno crime family. He was very involved with a group called the Bath Avenue crew. Um, do I understand the karate thing? No, I don't. I don't know why Jimmy did that. I'd like to ask him at some point why he did that. Um, do I think he met Tommy Karate at some point? Probably. Um, but no, uh, Jimmy Calandra was just like every person I mentioned before. They all have connections to the mob. They all knew people. Uh, and they're all, for the most part, uh, people that were, were very much involved with the life. Were they made men, some of them? No, Jimmy was not. Gene Barella was not. Frank Fiorina was not. But they all were a part uh, of doing some very um, violent and, and criminal things. Paul Mulvey, how you doing, bro? Um, I don't agree with that at all. I think I think Patrick Bet David is probably one of the only legitimate ones that does it. Um, he he has never presented Gianni Russo. Uh, Patrick Bet David is one of the only people that actually vets his people. Uh, Vlad TV doesn't do that. Vlad TV will put anybody on. Uh, all right, guys, let me get into. I want to I want to say hello to some people, but I also want to get in. Hey Jesse, Jr. Richard, thanks for watching. Uh, is the Amish Mafia real? Uh, no, the Amish Mafia is not real. Uh, they're all actors. Uh, all right, let me get into breaking some of these folks down um, and letting you truly know um, who is real and who's not. Uh, and if I didn't say hello to you, I apologize. I don't want to sit here and say hello to every single person. Hey, Mustache, how are you? Uh, I want to say hello to some of the, the regulars. Michael, Mustache Pete, how are you? Uh, Ridge, um, Kyle Trough, what's up? How are you? Uh, what's up, Alabama? How you doing? Cameron Taylor, Mo, all you guys. Thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. And I'll get to the rest of you guys really soon. But let me get into um, let me get into some of these people here. I want to start with um, this individual. Um, this person has popped up very recently uh, on multiple shows. Um, this person's name is Derek Galanis. Now he has popped up on three or four different shows as a Gambino associate. Okay. This is something that has to stop this calling yourself an associate because maybe someone in your family at one point, like Derek Galanis, Derek Galanis's father is a person called John Galanis. John Galanis is a convicted Ponzi schemer. He's a fraudster. He's a phony. Uh, he's a guy that has completely scammed hundreds of millions of dollars. Think of Bernie Madoff. Okay. He was given a long prison sentence, did a lot of time in the 80s and 90s, and he's currently sitting in prison for, for another financial fraud case. Uh, John Galanis is a serial uh, financial fraudster. Derek Galanis knows it, and everybody with a fucking brain knows it. Now, what Derek Galanis claims is that in the 80s, his father, who was at Terminal Island FCI in California, connected with gangsters in prison. Okay, so that makes Derek Galanis a mob associate. And Derek Galanis poses this nonsense that he's part of something called the Galanis crime family. 
Yes, he actually says that. And he believes that due to the fact that him and his father and brothers were part of a long-standing indictment involving stock fraud, that they're a crime family. And as usual, he's trying to pony into mob circles because he knows he can hawk his stupid book to people and idiots that will believe it. He also put out this nonsense that he was selling drugs on behalf of Tommy Gambino. I want to read something about Derek Galanis, which is very interesting because Derek Galanis claims that he's a drug dealer and he knew Tommy Gambino and he knew Albanians and all this stuff. But it's interesting because his lawyer would say that was complete nonsense. In fact, we didn't want that to be part of this because it's only going to hurt Derek Galanis. But now all of a sudden, Derek Galanis wants to call himself a Gambino associate. Let me read this. Derek Galanis okay, was arrested okay, in uh, 2001. Uh, and the uh, it was basically surrounding an ecstasy ring in California. Uh, Galanis grew up in San Diego. Now, the Union Tribune out in San Diego um, would get their hands on the, the kind of indictment. Essentially, the prosecutors would outline the potential link between the Gambino crime family and unnamed Kosovo rebels in Albania. Okay, this is very interesting. So what Derek Galanis was essentially doing was he was spouting his mouth off that he was working for different crime families selling ecstasy. Now, all of the indictment only came from Galanis. It was wiretap conversations where he's spouting off, hey, I'm connected to this guy and this guy, and this guy gave me money to do this and do that. Um, now, what's interesting about this is after all this comes out, um, even the prosecutor in the case, Todd Robinson, would say, we base our information not on speculation, but on words that came out of Galanis's mouth. Now, again, that doesn't mean that what Galanis says is true. He's just spouting a nonsense off. And they're going to use this against him because it may not be tied, but it's interesting. It creates headlines and it helps out the people that are prosecuting him for him saying that I could say I was selling drugs for somebody who would actually know until we actually looked into it. Anyone can say this kind of shit. And this is what these people do. They're serial liars. That's all they do. Everything they say is a lie. And this guy is at the top of the fucking heap. Now, prosecutors would contend that according to Galanis, his communications indicated that he was seeking financial backing and that he had supposedly got the backing from reputed mobster Tommy Gambino. Robinson said that Galanis also said that he had lived in Kosovo for a period of five months and may have developed smuggling ties, a.k.a. a connect to an unnamed member of the Kosovo military. Now, keep in mind, the lawyer in this case for Derek Atlantis, Michael Panzer, argued for bond. And he would also say that the alleged ties to the Gambinos and Kosovo are, quote, tenuous. He would plead it's pure speculation and has nothing to do with this case. So I ask you, Derek Galanis, why are you saying it now? Your lawyer didn't want to include this, and you know damn well you never had any connections to any of these people. Your father may have met one in prison one time, and all of a sudden you're a crime family. This guy is hawking books, and the people that are putting him out there, shame on you. This guy ain't a Gambino associate. Are you that hard up? For views, you're going to put these clowns on on tape to, to tell this nonsense. This guy actually says he's part of a crime family, the Galanis crime family. No, your dad is a stock fraud scam artist and a Ponzi schemer. You don't call it the Madoff crime family. This is all for him to pretend that he's some gangster in his head. He ain't a gangster. None of these people are. Christopher Canelli, $5. Thank you, my friend. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Um, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, what's up, Mob Entertainment Group? How are you? So there's our first person. There's our first person here today. All right. A um, lot of people in here. And I, I'm sorry that I didn't get to all your comments. Honestly, uh, the Galanis Morissette family. <laughs> exactly. Uh, exactly. That's so funny. Uh, what's up, Daniel Thompson? How are you? 
Mets fans is Sarah DePaggio is another big scammer fraud. Yeah, that's a, he's another one. I didn't include him on this, but yeah, Sarah DePaggio, another phony. Um, I'm going to have to unearth him at some point as well. Yeah, not not connected to the mafia at all. Pretends he's some big Miami mobster. Uh, complete nonsense. Uh, it's the jacket. What's up? How are you? Um, I didn't know that. Well, now you know. Now you know. Uh, Vlad will platform anyone as a mob guy with an Italian last name. Good, good point. Good point. Uh, let's get to our next person. Uh, everybody's favorite. This phony, Anthony Raimondi, or someone called Anthony Raimondi, someone that calls themselves Anthony Raimondi. Now, uh, this guy uh, is straight out of central casting. And I will admit, um, first of all, no one actually wears this kind of thing in the street. Okay. I love track suits, but I'm not in the street. Okay. I wear them because that's always been what I wear, but I don't wear them that half you know, zipped up with, you know, the Italian horn and all this stupid jewelry that he has on. Got the pinky ring, the fucking cigar that he never smokes, you know, that kind of nonsense. He's straight out of central casting. And what most people do is they see this guy and they say, come on, he can't be tell not telling the truth. Look at him. But again, first of all, no one in the mafia actually has a beard. Second of all, um, this guy has lied from the beginning till end. Everything he says is a lie. Everything. Nothing he says is true. Not even his name. Nothing about him is true. Nothing. He has essentially made a story up and just said, you know what? I'm going to put this out to the masses because who's going to call me out for it? Everybody I'm going to mention is dead. I could do the same thing. Hey, guys, by the way, when I was 20, I was actually selling a lot of cocaine and crack. And I was working for a drug cartel. I was the number two in it. Anybody could say this stupid shit. No, I didn't. I don't do any of that kind of shit. But you could say it. Who would actually, if I said right now, I was a member of the Chicago outfit and I moved to Pennsylvania. Who's going to say I didn't? I didn't know that guy. How would he know me? You could say anything you want. This guy claims that his name is Anthony Luciano Raimondi. And the fact that he included the name Luciano is the fact that he says he is related to Lucky Luciano through uh, blood. He also says he knew Meyer Lansky and that Meyer Lansky saw him regularly and that Lucky Luciano actually committed the fact that he left Italy to come see him when he was a child. He also says he was in the Colombo crime family and he was an enforcer. He killed people. Um, and it's all been proven to be nonsense. Fat Paul Sicilians talked about this. Oh, everyone's talked about it. And we've even unearthed the fact that he would say little things like he was in uh, MCC in 1968 or something. It wasn't even open until 1975. And the biggest nonsense that he doesn't even understand is it's very simple shit that he gets wrong that clearly shows that he doesn't know what he's talking about. He claims he killed someone called Sally Burns at one point. Um, and this was when he was a kid. He says that the federal government picked the case up and he was sent to federal prison for a murder. That's not how it works. Federal government doesn't pick up some popcorn case in Manhattan of some random kid killing another random kid. That doesn't happen. That's a state case. Everybody knows that. The only way a murder is going to be connected to that is if it's involving a, a gambling or or crime ring, or some sort of organized crime. You're not going to pick up some random murder and put it in the Fed. That's not how it works. He then claims that he somehow got off of it and was sent to the military to do his time instead of going to prison. He claims in the military he killed 300 people in the Vietnam War as a sniper, which we all know is stolen valor, and it never actually happened. Another bold-faced lie. And all the people in military, uh, the military world that know this kind of stuff have called him out as well. And that can be seen on the internet everywhere. This guy is in phony, stolen, uh, he's in stone, stolen valor uh, communities everywhere. Everybody knows this guy. So not only is he pretending to be a mobster, but he's pretending to be a hero. He's not. He's a complete phony and never been to Asia. He's not ever been out of fucking Brooklyn, let alone Asia. Um, he also has claimed other things. He uh, killed the Pope or attempted to kill the Pope. I mean, it's amazing that people actually believe this shit. And I'm thinking we're at the point now where 98% of people don't believe this idiot, but there are people that do. And you what to me is so, again, fascinating is that people continue 
to platform this guy. And I'm looking at you. You know who I'm talking about here. I'm not going to mention them on this channel because they don't deserve to be mentioned on this channel. But if you are platforming this person and you put yourself out there as a legit channel, shame on you. You're not a legit channel. And that's why you're not a legit channel. Because you're putting these phony f clowns on. That's why. So we have two people. Derek Galanis, phony. Anthony Raimondi, phony. And guess what they're trying to do? Hawk cigars and books and other nonsense. And I'm sure they're making money off of it. You know what's interesting? I've said this before. And I've gotten shit for it. But the truth is it's true. It's a truth that's true, of course. If you were in the streets in, let's say, the last 30 to 40 years, there is some sort of proof of it. You've been arrested. You've been to prison. You've been on gangland. Somebody's written about you. Every person I mentioned at the beginning of this show, Hootie, Jimmy, John A. Light, Gravano, Franzese, Mikey Scars, Fuertolino, all these people, all the guys that, that we've seen that were in the, the connected to the mob at some point, there is proof of that. There is absolutely no proof that this person or this person was ever connected to anything. None. Zero. It's their word saying, I did this. Again, we all have dreams. Every night we go to bed, we have dreams. It's like these guys came up with a dream one night and said, you know what? I was pretty fucking interesting. I'm going to tell that story for real. And I'm sure they'll sell books. I don't know who would buy them. The only reason I would buy their book is to use it for fucking burning fuel. I want to have a fucking campfire. Let's talk about this idiot as well. Danny Trio. Or Danny Trio is what he calls himself. His real name is actually Daniel Smith. And I want to, I don't know if he's still in here, but uh, Fatbolt Sicilian did a great job with unearthing this phony. Um, this guy came on here and essentially said that he was a Colombo family associate. He was from Brooklyn, uh, I think Coney Island. He had family members that were connected to Michael Franzese. Um, and he ultimately became this heavy, uh, you know, guy in the streets. He was robbing people. He was doing home invasions. He killed somebody and went to state prison and housed with people like Mad Dog Sullivan and Jimmy Burke and all this nonsense. And he comes on here and other channels take him and say, you know what? I don't know anything about the mob, so I'll bring this guy on because he probably knows about it. And he'll build my channel up. But then we found out that he was a complete phony and that he actually, funny enough, had never done anything that he had talked about. And this has been looked at through prison records, indictments, things like that. In fact, he's not even Italian. As I said, his name is Daniel Smith. Now, we have some very interesting proof that he actually isn't who he is. And what he ultimately did was he ran away and scurried like the little rat that he is. He ran away. We haven't seen him since. He's deleted his Facebooks, and he's went back to doing whatever the hell it was he was doing before. He came on here with a big phony attitude that he was some fucking tough guy. No, he wasn't. This guy is soft, and everybody knows it. Most people on here don't come across. Like, I've never come out and said, I'll beat the fuck. I never. I don't say that kind of shit. Because if I was, if I was really in danger, I'd jab this pen in your fucking neck. That's what I would do. I don't need to tell you I'm going to do it. I'm just going to do it. That's real crazy. But I'm not going to fight you over some dumb shit you say on the internet. I couldn't care less about that. Talk about me all you want. This guy? I mean, anytime you would say anything, it was this, that, fuck you, fuck that. You know, this is nonsense. This guy was the biggest phony out of them all. Because at least these guys stick to their story, as ridiculous as it is. This guy said all that shit and then just disappeared. And what's so hilarious about it is people like Fapol Sicilian actually found out that the thing that he was actually arrested for was being called the wash and wear burglar, which is funny in itself. According to a 1985 article out of the Sun Sentinel newspaper in Florida, Daniel John Smith was absolutely dubbed as the wash and wear burglar by police last spring. And with plenty of time to clean up his act. <laughs> Let, let's read more about this. Bear with me a second, guys. 
Hold on one second. I want to actually, uh, I want to bring this to you guys because it's so fucking funny, man. Hold on one second here. I want to actually read this article. I should have got this before. My apologies, guys. My fault. I don't think it's going to let me read it. Uh, fuck. My apologies, guys. If someone has that, um, is Fat Bolt Sicilian Standard? Can he send me that? I would. Uh, it's making me pay for it, and it won't let me fucking. It won't let me do it. Um, I don't know. Who knows? But essentially, he was this guy that was stealing, you know, underwear and things like that from people's homes. Um, it's amazing. These guys never cease to amaze me on here. Some of these folks that come on here and tell these stupid stories. Yep, he was a big mouth bullshitting POS. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. William Pat Brown says he said he was going to kill the Pope. Yes, exactly. You're talking about um, that idiot Ramundi. William Brown, Luciano wasn't even his real name. It was Lucania. Exactly. That's another funny thing about it. He's so dumb that he doesn't even realize that his name was Lucania. Salvatore Lucania. Hilarious. KK says Anthony Ramundi seems legit. I'm literally telling you he's not legit. And see, you still have people like this guy that still believe uh, that he's a legit person. Amazing. 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 Uh, Frank was on my show last night. I actually dropped the uh, I dropped the link here. I'll, I'll drop it again. That guy shot himself in the leg and lied about it. Yeah, that's the one thing that he actually did, and he doesn't want to take credit for it. The only proof that Anthony Ramundi ever did anything criminal, and it wasn't really even criminal, he shot himself in the leg with his own gun, Cheddar Bob style. And he did kill someone supposedly named Sally Burns, which he says, but it wasn't Sally Burns Granella like he tried to say. It's all nonsense. It's complete nonsense. Yeah, yeah, he whacked the Pope. Yep, exactly. And again, they don't have the ability to tell their own stories. But the people that are platforming these clowns, they deserve the biggest shots here. And again, I ain't telling you who they are because I'm not giving them any credit here. But you can look at the chat. I'm sure the chat will tell you who it is. A lot of people doing this that shouldn't be doing it. And it ain't right. Also, the making up stories crap for views. That's another thing. That's another thing. Yeah, again, though, Gianni Russo is legitimate. I know you don't want to believe it, but he is. Some of the stuff he says is stupid. It's all funny. But he did know some of these people. He was – so what, Will? He wasn't an actor in The Godfather? I mean, come on. What are you talking about? Listen, Will, I get you don't like Gianni Russo, but he – I'm not saying that he worked for people. I don't know that. But he was in The Godfather, and he definitely knew people. Um, as far as that, Vlad's uh, definitely the top of that. I like Bet David. I think he's very good. Yes, he did. He did. What's up, Matthias? How are you? Thanks for uh, checking in, man. Yes, that's exactly right. It's exactly right. And again, the people that are putting these people on are the worst parts of this because they have some sort of little following and they're making these people more than what they are. It is your job to look these people up. It just is. No, he's another phony. Richard Kuklinski. He's not on YouTube, but yeah, he's probably the biggest phony. He didn't do any of the shit he says. He didn't kill Joey Gallo. He didn't kill Paul Castellano. He didn't kill anyone. The only killing he did was because he was a sick fuck serial killer. I'm going to do a show on him soon. And you know what? You're not going to hear anything about the mafia because he didn't kill anyone in the mafia. He didn't know anyone in the mafia. It's 
complete nonsense. That is the biggest crock of shit that I've heard. Thank you for watching, Who You. Thank you for checking in. He's related to everybody. It's amazing. It's amazing. <laughs> he he literally is related to everyone. They're all related to each other. How can you release a 60-minute interview in 18 parts without the lies? That's a good, good point. Good point. Vlad should answer for that, why he interviewed Ramundi. Because Vlad doesn't care. It's all about views for Vlad. And most of the people that watch Vlad don't know shit about the mafia. So they just take the guy as, as spoken truth. By the way, any of you folks, any of you folks here that I'm talking about, if you want 10 minutes to come on this show, you're welcome to. And I'll rip you all apart. All of you. But you wouldn't. You know that. You'd rather go on shows where people will parade you around like you're legitimate. And yes, I'm looking at you. I'll say it. Invest in yourself clothing. I've told you multiple times about this. I don't know why. You're, you seem like a nice guy. I don't know why you're putting these people on your channel. I know you're trying to get views. But do some research and just do your own videos. You don't need these people. They're not doing nothing for you. And you know why I have a problem with, with someone like him is he has been told this by multiple people that these people aren't legitimate and he keeps putting them out. I've said many times, if Angel Gotti gives me proof that anything I've ever said about her father was not true, I would not only make a correction, but I'd take the video down. I've said that multiple times. She's never provided me any legitimate proof that anything I've said is not true. I don't care how many views it has. But when you tell some of these people, hey, you're not telling the truth here. These people are not real. Well, I interviewed that guy three months ago. What's that matter? We're telling you now it's nonsense. And you continue to put clips out about it. I like Tom Lavecchia, but you platform Glanis. You can't platform these people, man. You're doing a disservice, and people don't need. They don't. Even, you you can do your own stuff. You don't need them, people. I don't know why these some of these guys, especially Tom. I mean, Tom has a channel. He don't need to interview that guy. Nobody's missing not hearing from that guy. Do you ever plan on doing a show about real life Gamora characters? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, ben Olmark, how are you? Thank you for uh, watching. Don Arbital says, love your content. Thank you. Guys, if you enjoy the show, we've got uh, over uh, almost 350 people in here. Do me a favor, hit that like button. Make sure you subscribe if you're new. I hope you enjoy my content. We got a little thing for every, everybody on here. We've got videos on everybody, all sorts of people. We got the podcast, uh, we got everything. Uh, if you'd like to give to the channel, hit that super chat button. Show some love. I don't come on live very often. Uh, Fat Bolt Sicilian says, check your text. All right, let me take a look here. All right. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Fat Bolt Sicilian has sent me the Washington burglar arrested. Let me read this. Daniel John Smith. Okay, let me bring his picture up one more time. This person right here uh, who claims his name is Danny Trio. Daniel John Smith dubbed. The Washington burglar by police last spring apparently will have plenty of time to clean up his act before he walks the streets again. Smith, 19, was arrested Thursday as he strolled across a library parking lot in the 1400 block of East Sunrise Boulevard. Three times a fugitive, he was being held without bail in Broward County. Officer Bud Mathai, who made the arrest, recognized Smith because he had arrested him after burglary spree last March, at the time, defect, detectives called Smith the, quote, Washington burglar for his alleged habit of breaking into homes, exchanging his clothes for clean ones he found, and then scrubbing up before escaping. Smith had been sought on burglary charges, nine outstanding Florida warrants for burglary and grand theft and larceny warrants issued by police out of New York City. Smith had been uh, placed in a community re uh, release program at a halfway house around March, but he fled after he was arraigned in another burglary. To give this guy community release sounds insane, Edward Sosinski said Thursday, but I guess because the jails are so overcrowded, they had no alternative. 
Now equipped with credit cards taken during a Fort Lauderdale mugging, Smith headed to New York City with a friend. A short time later, NYPD arrested Smith, who was using the name Chip Mayhew, (laughs) son of liquor store owner Carl Mayhew. That's fucking hilarious. Leaving New York before his court, Smith had usually also used the alias Daniel Anthony Triola. There you go. Danny Trio. Daniel Triola. After questioning uh, by Matai and Cutler, Smith admitted that he broke into a home in the 1200 block of Northeast 2nd Street on Saturday and stole several credit cards. So that's pretty fucking concerning. Danny Trio. And guess what? He's disappeared. We haven't seen him again. So this stuff reported by Fat Bull Sicilian and other folks has been true. And it's here, right here. The dates work out. He never killed anyone. He never went to New York State police, uh, New, York, New York State prisons. He was never around Mad Doug Sullivan or Jimmy Burke. In fact, we don't even know that he lived in New York at any point. Maybe. But according to this, at 19, he was in Florida. And maybe he fled and went to New York because, hey, you're not going to find me there. He then used the name Chip Mayhew, which is a stolen credit card. But then he was using the same alias, Danny Trio. This guy was hoping no one would look into this stuff. And he didn't believe there were any sleuths out there that could find it. Shout out to the internet, proving this guy is a complete phony. A complete and utter phony. Thank you, uh, FBS, for giving me that. Thank you so much. That is a very good stuff. Um, Ramundi's claims about being an MCC were debunked uh, by um, a few legit wise guys. They said he claimed he was on a floor that didn't exist. <laughs> that, that too. It also wasn't even open. It didn't open till the mid-70s. Uh, thank you, Paul Mulvey. I appreciate that. Uh, Myron Sugarman was a decent interview. Hope he's authentic. He's another one. I, I've never heard of him ever. Now I have to look more into him, um, but he's one of those guys. I think he was probably just like a researcher and he just hung around and now he's using it as he was connected to the Jewish mafia. Um, you just destroyed any credibility you did have. Huge mistake, you say, that these guys are low lowlifes, yet you willingly give, give props to pay piggy and proven rats. First of all, Billy, let me let me tell you about something here. You are a grown man talking about proven rats. Think about yourself, bro. Seriously. You probably never committed a crime in your life, but you have this goofy, stupid call to America. Even though you're probably not even Italian, you never met a fucking gangster in your life. And all of a sudden you hate rats. Shut up, man. What are you talking about? You sound like an asshole. You giving proven rats a, a platform because they're part of history, stupid asshole. Do you not get this shit? And I don't know who Pay Piggy is, but if you're telling me that that's Fat Bolt Sicilian, shame on you. He creates content just like any of these people do. If you don't like him, don't watch him. But you're salty as shit because the kid makes money and you don't. You work some rat trap job in some rat trap city in some rat trap apartment somewhere. And you're saying, why can't I do that? You can't because you're not fucking talented and nobody gives a hell about who you are. That's why. Billy, it sounds like you're a jealous asshole and you don't have any credibility yourself. So you come on the internet with a fake name and fake account and try to talk shit. Hey, Billy, how about this? How about I drop the link and you come on and tell me that to my face? Because like everyone else, I'll completely destroy you. Don't come on here and say stupid stuff, man. You sound like an idiot. I don't talk to rats. Shut up, man. You ain't in the streets. A rat never did nothing to you. And I, I'll tell you another thing. I'll tell you another thing. The people that are truly in this shit, doing this shit, you know who they avoid? Rats, because they're in the streets. You ain't. My job is to tell a fucking story, dude. My job is to get views and create content to people that were in this world. I know you don't want to admit that Sammy Gravano was part of this world, but he was, and he was pretty damn important. So you're damn right I'm going to listen to his stories. And without him, you wouldn't have any of this shit, this content. What world do you live in, Billy? Clearly a ridiculous one.
Can you do a video on YSL? Uh, yes, at some point. Uh, what are your thoughts on Anthony Cauchy? Uh, he's another one. I have to look more into him. I've heard a little bit that he was connected. I think it was more some of his family that was connected, but I have to look into that. Thank you, Daryl. Appreciate you watching. Philly 3458 1999 Super Chat. Thank you, Philly. I appreciate that. Welcome in. Uh, thank you for donating. Uh, that's very nice. You 368 people in here. Welcome in. Thank you for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoy the show. It's time we did do this. This is important. Some of these people need to be talked about. What about Frank Sheeran? He was connected for sure, but claims all kind of nonsense. What category does he go into in your book, legit or fake? Listen, guys, the only people that go into the fake world are people that weren't in that world. Frank Sheeran was very respected. Did he kill Joey Gallo? No. Did he kill uh, Jimmy Hoffa? I believe he was involved. I don't think he killed him, though. No, that definitely didn't happen. That's another thing. There's this go goofy guy all over the internet now, Michael Yarborough, who claims that he saw Jimmy Hoffa buried alive in concrete in the middle of Detroit in the middle of July, in the middle of the summer during the day. The most important labor uh, person on the planet would just – Killed in the broad daylight in the middle of one of the busiest cities in America in broad daylight. No one saw it. And in fact, all the witnesses that saw it, we don't mind that. Come on, man. I mean, what? where do these people come from? And why do people platform these people? Well, I don't know if he was doing that, but uh, something was going on there. I personally believe Sally Bugs Bergulio killed Hoffa. I, I don't disagree with you on that. Paulie Walnuts, love your content. Thank you, Paulie Walnuts. $20. Thank you, man. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Hey, Ridge, thank you. $5. Appreciate that. Thank you so much. I loved your show on Seattle's Frank Colacursio. Yes, Frank Colacursio was not a gangster. Well, he was a gangster. He was not a mobster. He was an Italian guy that ran strip clubs. There was no mafia in Seattle. But thank you for watching. Uh, Alan Blue says that Danny Smith was a hangout dude on Mermaid and Surf in front of an auto glass business in Brooklyn, thinking he was a tough guy. He robbed the church and climbed into homes. He's the lowest form of life. Yeah, maybe he lived there like when he was in his teens. But yeah, he was just a, a, a just a, a street criminal. That's all he was. Yeah, if he'd have just. Here's what you know what he should have did. Okay, and this is where Danny or uh, Ramundi messed up. He claimed that the story was all real. He should have created it as fiction, and and you're right, wrote for like some sort of movie company. That's what he should have did. He would make way more money, but instead he wants to be this gangster uh, that he's not. What is a pay picket? No, it's nothing. It's someone that, again, makes money off the internet and Billy is some like fucking boomer asshole that thinks the only job you can have is in a factory and being a real man. Listen, Billy, I've made main, I'm, I make way more money than you and I sit on the internet all day. I don't know if you know this, Billy, but there's a lot of people that make way more money than you that are on the internet. I know it hurts you because you can't do it. Just because someone makes money on the internet doesn't make them a pay piggy. You're an asshole. And you work way harder instead of smarter. Sorry. Um, that's that's what we have here. He wouldn't come on. He's, he, he would never come on. No fucking way. Yep. Now it's resorting to name calling. Billy, you got destroyed, bro. Time to go off. Go away. Bye-bye. See ya. Do you have any thoughts on Frank DiMatteo? Um yeah, Frank was around. He was around Brooklyn. Definitely knew people. Um, you know, associate. A true associate. I don't think anyone. And Frank's a nice guy. He tells interesting stories. He's written some really good books. Um, just an interesting guy, man. I don't think he's ever claimed to be like a big time gangster either. Hey, Curtis. Curtis from Montana. How are you, bro? Good to see you.
All right. If you come in here and talk about creators, you're out of here. You don't, don't, don't put out nonsense like that. Uh, love your sit downs. Thank you to truth. Thank you for watching, man. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All these, I hate rat people. If Sammy Ravano contacted you and said, I will come on your show for free tomorrow. You would all have him on. Shut up. Yes, he did. Good afternoon. How are you, Neil? How are you? He said the guys who push Hoff into the cement were bl wearing Blues Brothers suits. Amazing. You should do an episode on Alpo and Wayne Perry. Uh, uh, sure, at some point I will. Uh, you've got a huge fucking mouth for a degenerate virgin who will never get near a vagina. First of all, it's vagina. And second of all, uh, that's funny because I fucked your wife last night, buddy. Uh, trust me. Don't, don't talk to me. By the way, Billy, I'm sure you have. All right, Billy, here, here's what we're going to do. Billy, I'm going to drop the link. Come on the show right now. And make sure you show your face so we can see the kind of ladies man you are. Here we go. There you go, Billy. Come on. You got five minutes. If you don't come on, you're going to be blocked. We gave you an opportunity. Uh, you don't want to come on. Uh, so there you go. Uh, hey, Bill. Thanks for uh, coming on, Bill. Bill Cotolo. Another great interview that I've had. All right. See you later. Um, if, if you're just an asshole, you're out of here. Uh, Sean Wade, five dollar super chat. Thank you, Sean Wade. I appreciate that, brother. Have a great day, man. Uh, we're waiting for Bill to come on the show. I, I doubt he will. Uh, oh, of course he would. That's exactly right. He ain't gonna come on though. That, that's not his. That's not in his nature. Bill, stop talking. Come on the show then. Stop pretending. Bill, come on. I don't need a mod in here. I have it. I've perfectly taken care of. Derek Galanis, I'll come on. Well, we don't, that's probably not him. Um, Jeff, I grew up in Coney Island all my life, 55 years. I've never heard of him, but he knew a lot of players in Coney Island, not sticking. He, no, wait, he knew a lot of players or he said he knew a lot of players. There's a difference. DJ Benny Gambina, what's up, bro? Hope you're well. Same to you. I have a book. Everything in there is true. Oh, so that makes it that that makes it definitely true because you said it in a book. So it has to be true. Listen, Derek, if that's actually you, uh, you're not a Gambino associate. No, you documented yourself as that. You continue to document yourself saying you're from a crime family and all this nonsense. Your father was a stock fraud scam artist and you followed in his footsteps. Stay out of this genre and go do something else, please. You're not you shouldn't be writing about the mafia. I'm not trying to be rude, but that, that that's not right. You know it, and we all know it. You didn't sell drugs for the mafia. You didn't know the Gambinos. You didn't know anybody. Let's just be real. No, I'm not linking you in. I'm not linking you in. Uh, I've said enough about you. Unless you have proof that you knew these people, uh, let us know. If don't, if not, you're not coming on. We're not. You're not going to per, per. You're not going to persuade us to buy your nonsense. We're not doing that. Uh, awesome show. Thank you, MJ. Bill, listen, come on the show. Stop talking. Come on the show. You're going to go away. We're going to give you two more minutes. No, Derek's not grabbing the link. Unless Derek has proof of who he is, he's not grabbing the link. And he can grab the link. The link is there, and he didn't. So he's welcome to click it. I'll give him two minutes. Uh, William Cutting, first time here. It's nice to find people of the same interest. Hey, William, thank you for watching, man. I appreciate that. A $5 super chat. Thank you. Uh, that's the that's the point, Derek. You can't. You can just say whatever you want, and we're supposed to believe it. Um, it, it first of all... <laughs> Derek, I think I think you know that you probably don't want to come on here. It wouldn't be good for you. It, it would, and, and remember, I have a bigger following than you do. Wouldn't be good for you. And I'm trying to be nice, man. I'm trying to tell you the truth. The question is, you say that the government gave you these titles, yet you've come on here and tried to hawk books saying the same nonsense. I don't want to talk about it. Everything I'm saying is legitimate. You know it and I know it. 
There's nothing for me to talk about with you. That's all, <laughs> you know? You're cool with me? I mean, we don't have it. There's no reason for us to be cool. I don't know you. You're not coming on here and, and spouting your nonsense. Same to you. Thank you, Benny. Funhouse, what do you want to say? What's up, Jeff? It's uh, BT. Yeah. I, I spoke to you before. Yeah, how are you? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm all right. Listen, I'm not standing up for dude, you know, but unless you, unless you were from Coney Island, you wouldn't know these people, you know? And that's the only thing. You know, I know. Yeah, but guys, again, you know, I'm, I'm, but but again, I'm not. Whether he lived in New York, that really has no bearing. I, I don't really care. I mean, he he's not who he says he was. It's just it's been proven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah, I don't I don't listen, man. And I, I think I the biggest thing about it is, like I said, I, if he's from if he lived in Coney Island, that's fine. I mean, it would have been when he was a, a young kid. I mean, he wasn't like some grown man or anything. Yeah, That's what yeah. I'm I don't listen. Like I said, you know, um, I never seen him around, but you know, he knew a lot of, you know, a lot of people. A lot of, well, he mentioned a lot of names. Who the fuck knows? You know, like I said, I'm not standing up for him, but it just, it just bugs me out that he knew all these people. You know, and well, he was Junior about, Lollipop you know, he, says I'm from Coney Island. I asked old timers; no one knew him. Um, which again, no one would know him because he was a younger guy. So, I mean, he committed a lot of these crimes, and he was a young. 20 year old or so so yeah 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 i just wanted to come on just say what's up jeff i haven't seen you in a well, while. i hope I'll you're doing well, well brother yeah yeah it's good it's good you know good. get inside right. you look cold yeah yeah i got the the boots over here oh you know? good looking yeah. dog yeah 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 he's good thanks man. for coming on of course man have a good day all right cheers all right Just a friend. Nice guy. Thank you for coming on. He knows the names, not the people. Yeah, exactly. That's a good point as well. And I think when we're talking about whether he knew these people or not, I've said before, like, there's a lot of people that lived in Brooklyn, the Bronx, Queens, that were living in these neighborhoods and said, oh, I used to see him at the coffee shop. I knew him. Well, no, you didn't. I mean, here's the thing. There are bikers from from one percenter groups that live close to me. I see them all the time. That doesn't make me an associate. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, it's pretty simple. If I lived in South Philly and I walked to, um, I don't know, Argon Steaks. I like Argon Steaks. I used to live in South Philly. I go to Argon Steaks and I see, I don't know, some guy that's connected to the life. I'm not an associate because I see him uh, regularly. When you live in these neighborhoods, like South Philly, for instance, it's not a big place. Everybody knows everybody. So it's like, that doesn't make you a mob associate, right? That's what I'm trying to say here. Exactly. Oh, yeah, this is funny. Noam Chomsky says, Gravano is not who he says he is, and you would let him on. Yeah, yeah, he wasn't who he says he is. That's that's exactly right. Thank you, Noam. Thanks for telling everybody that. All history is wrong and you're right. He's not who he says he is. Come on, guys. Seriously, people like this have to go. We, we can't have these people on here. Thank you, Anthony. Welcome in, my friend. Thank you for checking out. Mark C says, Joey Messino here. I'm using a different name as mine was taken. Uh, if you're actually Joey Messino, uh, I would uh, be glad to have you on. Uh, Rallo Tomasi, uh, $50 super chat. I believe that is Singaporean, possibly. Uh, have you ever considered breaking down the real life inspiration to the Sopranos, uh, aka Uncle Junior, is so and so? Um, yeah, I've thought about that. Um, but I think the problem that you have, though, and thank you for, for the donation, it means a lot. I think the problem you have with that is. Um, they're not all based off one person. So like Tony Soprano is not based off solely Vinny Ocean or Richie the Boot. Like they're, they're all kind of mixed up. So yeah, maybe I did a show on Sopranos actors that were actually connected to people in the mafia, or maybe they did stuff in the streets at one point. I also did a video on 
Um, John D'Amato, who was the real life inspiration of Vito Spadafore. Um, but uh, yeah, that's a pretty good idea, actually. I might I might consider doing that. Uh, Grafano was the under. Exactly. It actually didn't happen, Don Vito. It, it's actually all not true. None of that's actually true. None of the stuff that he did, it, it was all a dream. It never actually happened, uh, according to this guy. Junior Lipop says, I, yeah, I once saw Sammy when I was 10 standing outside of Tally's. I'm going to create a channel and say I know him. Exactly. That's what these people do. It's amazing. It's I was 16, and one time I went to the um, L&B Spumoni Gardens, and Vinny Asaro was there. So I'm a, a mob associate now. And that's exactly what Danny Trio and Derek Galanis and Anthony Ramundi, that's what all these guys do. Exactly. And that's a good thing about these guys. They do have pretty sharp memories. I'll give them that to remember all these dumb dreams. Do I think the Eagles are going to go to the Super Bowl? Um, yeah, I do. I, I think they're the strongest team in the NFC. Everything's going to come through Philadelphia. So that's obviously big time. Um, so, yeah, I think I think it's going to be very difficult for them to knock it. The one team I'm worried about is obviously the San Francisco 49ers. Um All right. Uh, Chris Danju says, what do you think about the recent attack on Mikey Scars from Sammy? And by the way, guys, if you have any comments or questions, uh, you want to ask about anything criminally uh, or crime related, feel free. If you want to talk about Idaho, we're welcome to do that. I've done a lot of that recently. Um, what do you think about the reason? And by the way, guys, Fat Bolt Sicilian will back this up. I was the first person on the internet to report the sheath thing. Friday, the day the kid was arrested, I put that shit out. I'm a fucking newsbreaker. And I am going to the trial, by the way. I will be in Moscow. I'm already planning it. Uh, what do you think about the recent attack on Mikey Scars from Sammy the Bull Gravana? Um, see, yeah, I saw that. Listen, obviously Sammy's upset. I've never seen him actually do that. He doesn't usually call people out. So we have to think what Michael's saying is getting to Sammy. Uh, I've never seen him do that. Um I I know when I asked Sammy about that, he was very standoffish at the end of the interview. I I got I threw that in. He was not happy. It seemed like that I mentioned that, um, but I don't know. I, I think you know Mikey has a good channel and a good Patreon, and they're telling a lot of good stories. And whenever you have someone to the level of like someone like Mikey Scars, look if someone like John A Light says this kind of stuff, it's like well you weren't really there, so you wouldn't know. But Mikey Scars was pretty powerful in his own right. And he has the ability to debunk a lot of this shit. And I think if you're Sammy, you've had a monopoly on this industry for so long. And now you have people that aren't willing to play the game with you. <clears throat> so, yeah, I think I think he clearly was bothered by it. You could tell. I'm living in Romania. I was introduced to you by one or two guys from the clans here. It absolutely does not make me a mob associate. Exactly. Exactly. See, you hear this is all uh, international. Everybody knows this stuff. Uh, and, and I'm glad that you um, I'm glad that you kind of understand it as well. Living in Romania. Uh, yes, we did. Yes, we did. Roxy King. Thank you, man. Appreciate you watching. Has anyone ever offered for that clown or Anthony or money to do a lie detector test? Uh, no, but I would pay for it if he did. Uh, you got to do a show in Kansas City. Uh, I will at some point. I don't need to provide paperwork. I, you don't. There, what is there paperwork of? What, that you were actually in the mafia? There is none. There, there's no proof. There, 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 I don't understand what they would tell me. All they, they completely said it. It was substantiated by the stuff you said. You could say anything. And it makes, of course they're going to say that. It makes the case more interesting. We got a mob associate. They didn't, though. Nobody cares. I heard it's buy one button, get second button half off today in the avian crime family. <laughs> John Joe's pork is the best sandwich in Philly. Uh, I don't agree with that. It's good, but I don't agree with that. Yeah, I like Phillips as well. Phillips or, um, um, or um, Argan Steaks. All right. I've been waiting for this show. Thank you, Rick. 
Um, I don't know what you're talking about. Thank you, Mad Moose. I appreciate that. Welcome in. If you're in here and you're watching, we have almost over 400 people in here. Thank you for doing that. Hit that like button. Make sure you subscribe. It means a lot. Thank you. You're showing the Idaho murders is great. Thank you, Richard Gerard. Thank you so much. Jeff, are you sheathing me? <laughs> Thank you. Get the likes up. Yes, everyone should hit the like button. It, it doesn't take any time. Hit the like button. It's very easy. Jason Choice, join Choice says, fuck Baltimore. What did Baltimore ever do to you? I love Baltimore. Thank you. Yeah, we've done some really good um, Twitter spaces on that and, and done some good discussion on it. So, Thank you, Fat Bolts is saying. Yes, I remember him and I were talking that day. Uh, we were talking about the, um, the, the video that essentially came out that he allegedly called into a, a – um, a podcast uh, when is the trial uh we don't have the date yet <laughs> what are your favorite crime movies that are not mob related uh the town um shot caller shot caller is a, an incredible film um felon is a great movie um I love Felon. Felon's super underrated. Steven Dorff, that's a great movie. A great movie. Him and that movie and Shot Caller are super good. If you haven't seen them, I highly recommend. Um, but yeah, uh, Felon is about this guy that um, he's like a roofer. He's like a roofing contractor. He has a small family and he he's starting out, starting to make money, doing his thing. And um, one night, he someone breaks into his home and he shoots the perpetrator. Um, and it's about his experiences uh, in the prison system and, and what happens to him. Uh, it's pretty sad, man. It's really good. Really well done. I thought Stephen Dorff did a great job in that movie. Um, Harold Perrano is in it as well. Harold was um, in Oz. He was the wheelchair uh, narrator. Uh, he's a, a villain in the film. It's very good. There's also another guy in it. Um, I forget his name. He's in a lot of big time movies. What the hell is that guy's name? He's like the, uh, he's like the, he's the guy that kind of teaches um, Dorf's character about, um, oh, Val Kilmer. That's who it is. He teaches Dorf about prison. I would highly recommend if you haven't seen that, um, I would check it out. Uh, Rude Iris says, Angel Gotti actually stated last night that Junior's meeting with the feds was a great legal move that led to his acquittal. Oh, yeah. That's what it was. Great legal move. Now, if anyone else had did that, they would be a rat. Angel would never be seen with them. She, they'd be a part of the the rat crew on Justice Tech Pros. Um, a great legal move. Of course it is, because it involves the Gotties. If that was John Smith that did that, rat, fucking rat, you scumbag, motherfucker. You know, same shit. Right, 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 right. Derek, enough trolling at this point. Yes, exactly. Cut it out. We don't even know that that's him. Um, this is a great show. Thank you, Michael. Michael, no name. Do you think the government is trying to connect the coaxies to Philly to Daniel Kinahan? Uh, I have no idea. I have no idea. Uh, pro pro probably. I mean, they're trying to connect it to everybody. You need some artwork in the background. Uh, no, I don't. Mark, you're not an interior decorator. I'm not sure I need your tips. Um Whatever happened to Vinny Bracco? Uh, he's still out there. He actually reached out to me on my comment section yesterday. Uh, I guess he's still around. Let's take a walk and talk with Lefty. What's up, Lefty? How are you? Uh, Lefty uh, Lefty Guns Pool Hall, I believe. It was his old channel. I was speaking with him last night. Hey, Lefty, how are you? Uh, yeah, that'll come at some point. Thank you, King of Queens. Appreciate that. If you guys want to check out my podcast, it's in the description of this video. Yes, that's exactly what he's doing. And it seems like Sammy's not happy with it either. Fargo's a good movie. Yes, it is. The Town's a great movie. Yeah, it is. I love that movie. Blood in, blood out. Yeah, they were both really good. 
I don't agree with that. I think that I think the town's a great movie. Yeah, you'll like Felon. Felon's a real good one. I feel like I blocked this guy 20 times. He just makes new accounts. You should do an episode on Lincoln Park. Yes, it's been mentioned in the um the wire and everything. Yeah, I gotta do that. State of Grace, yeah, that's a good one. Sleepers, that's one of my favorites. It's kind of mob related with the Irish mob. Sleepers is probably my favorite, uh, one of my favorite movies. Don Vito Cachafera, have you seen that new Stallone series? I watched five minutes and couldn't find the remote quick enough to get it off. I actually liked it. I thought it was pretty cool. I, I think I you have to understand it's it's not really a mob show. I mean, it is, but it's not. I mean, it's 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 different. It's kind of a comedy and i actually liked it i thought it got better as it went on there was a time where i kind of considered not watching it but i ended up ultimately continuing to watch it and i was it's not like some elite show i mean it's solid it, it's a solid network tv show i'm from charlestown oh no shit cool stuff man Yeah, it definitely is a much watch. <laughs> Thank you, Anthony Sessa. I appreciate that. What's up, Skin Dean? How are you? Yeah, I know it is. If you could ask any mafia boss one question and they had to respond truthfully, who would it be and what's your question? Um, I would probably ask Vinny Gorgeous something along the lines of like the crazy act thing, you know, something like that. Or I don't know. I'd have to think about that. It's a good question. You're kind of putting me on the spot, Mark. See. Yeah, American Me is good. Thank you, bad bug. I appreciate that. Gotti, the movie was awesome. The 96 one was. The other one was horrific. Could you make a video on MK Ultra? Uh not really. I'm not a psychiatrist, so I don't I don't think. The town is awesome, but gotta watch the extended version. What is that? I don't. I don't think I've ever seen that. What? What? It's like extra. That's interesting. I feel like it was good the way it was. Yeah, I agree with that. Who is this guy? Uh, I'm Jeff. There's a reason you're here. Because uh, you're a troll. That's why I'm blocking you. You know what? You're an idiot. Uh, I love the Sal episode last night. Thank you, Larson Game. I appreciate that. What's up, Keith? How are you? Yes, I always give you a shout out. John DeGrazia. Thank you, bro. Appreciate that. A lot of commenters here tonight. What's up, Buddha Bing? My man. How you doing? Yeah, I've seen Tombstone. That's uh, my dad liked that movie. It's a good movie. Casino is good. Yeah, but it's a, we're, we're not talking about mob movies. We're talking about crime movies. But all right, guys. I think I've achieved what I've looking what I was looking to achieve today. Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, thank you for all the super chats. I appreciate it. Uh, that means a lot to me. Um, you know, it's not often that I do live, so anytime I can come on and um, and do a show, it uh, it means something to me. Um, so thank you for uh, for coming in and saying hello. Um, I hope you enjoyed the show, and I'll see you again soon. Uh, my next show will be out Saturday. Um, so make sure you check that out. It'll be out at three o'clock per usual. Uh, so hopefully you check that out and check out all my recent episodes. I want to finally put uh, my podcast uh, one more time in the uh, description here. I'm going to drop the episode link right when you're done with this, go give this a listen. Uh, me and Frank Fiorellino, a great show on Sal Vitale and Joe Messino and kind of the, the ultimate betrayals that they both had on the families. Uh, name four mobsters from Mount Rushmore. Uh, Marcello, Accardo, 
Gambino, Luciano, uh, Marcello, Ocardo, Gambino, Luciano. Thank you. Appreciate that. Appreciate that, Richard. All right, guys, I'm out of here. Until next time, you can check out all my uh, content on barstoolsports.com, on my blogs, everything. And if you want, you can follow me on Twitter, at Jeff Nadu, at Jeff Nadu. Have a great day. We'll see you next time.